if you picture that line in the sand there as a beach, that would make this a nice big bay of water in front of me and the big open ocean back here behind. Waves are coming from the open ocean where big storms are creating them. It's just wind on water and they're all being sent towards shore. And waves are gonna break in shallow water, not deep water. So they just move through the water into the bay until they hit something shallow. Now what we have here is called a beach break. And a beach break just means that waves break on sand. So the shallow areas on a beach break are where the sand has been piled up higher, creating these shallow shelf areas that we call the sand bar. The wave moves through the water, hits something shallow, and it makes it break. When it crashes, that's when the energy is pushing water forward up to the beach. Water going uphill wants to go back downhill with gravity. So this is the direction that the water wants to go, straight back out the way it came in. But it can't go straight back out because the shelf here of the shallow sandbar is gonna block it from exiting, as well as the water constantly rushing forward over a sandbar is gonna stop it from exiting straight back out. So for the water to get back out, it first actually has to go around the sandbar. It's gonna take a lateral turn here in front of the sandbar and move sideways. This is what we call the longshore current. It's the beginning of the rip current. People that are trying to learn how to surf out there, we wanna be in this zone from the sandbar towards the beach to learn in that white water. And this current is very good at moving you away from that sandbar. So we have to battle it a little bit in order to stay in front of the sandbar to catch more waves and also to avoid the more dangerous part, which is where the water after it goes sideways starts to head out towards the open ocean. We wanna do one main thing to ensure that we, made, we stay in our location here and that is use landmarks. We can easily see where a sandbar is from the beach because waves are breaking there all the time. But once you walk in the water, you're not really gonna know where the hell you are anymore without a reference point. So you gotta turn around back to land and see something that's easy to recognize to line up with it. Whatever happens to be the case of a big, easy to identify landmark, say for instance, there's just one specific tree that's super easy to see. We're gonna make sure that when we walk out, we recognize that that tree is in front of us. And when you catch a wave towards shore, you'll usually move on a little bit of an angle as that long shore current will push you sideways along the beach. And once you finish your wave, if you notice that your landmark is in the other direction from where you're standing, you're gonna wanna walk over to it in the nice shallow water where it's easy to, to navigate. Use that easy access to get back to your landmark and then walk back out to the sandbar. Now, when I'm instructing, I'm usually standing here on the sandbar helping you catch waves. So you can kind of use me as your landmark, but on your own, you're responsible to find something to return back to all the time to ensure that you always stay in the same zone, catch lots of waves, and don't drift too far down the beach to where it's more dangerous. Now, if you weren't doing that, and you specifically have not really surfed much, and you just keep drifting down the beach after you catch your wave with that longshore current, eventually, you're gonna end up in the area where the water is gonna find a way back out. And all it needs, a more deep channel between a couple of sandbars, and that water that wants to go out finally has its escape route to head out towards the open ocean. This part here is the rip current that is considered more dangerous, right? And it's dangerous mostly to people who don't understand how it works. So if you don't want to be in a rip current because you don't want to be pulled out towards the open ocean where it's hard to get back in, we want to make sure that you understand that the water that's pulling you out in the moment you realize here is moving through a channel. So the only moving water is only as wide as the channel is, which means it's literally turned into a river of water within the ocean. For you to get out of this rip current, you need to treat it like any other river in the world, right? If you're floating downstream in a river and you gotta get out of that river, where do you go? You swim out of the river to the side. And this can be why <clears throat> it's so dangerous for people who don't understand that. Natural human instinct is gonna take over sometimes. And if you see that a beach is getting further away, most people's natural instinct is to panic and try to paddle back to shore as hard as they can. This puts them fighting a rip current, basically swimming upstream in a river, which exhausts you and only puts you further out into the ocean, more and more exhausted. So that's a dangerous place to be for human beings if you're exhausted out in the open ocean, right? So stay calm and relax. What we wanna realize here is that even though you're getting pulled out towards the open ocean, you don't need to go back to shore right away. You just need to get out of that current to the nearest calm water. So you wanna exit out to the sides of the rip current and it's actually kind of easy to see once you're in a rip current where it is not. The water that's moving on the surface of the water, it'll have this darker color and distorted surface. And the water beside it that's not moving 
it's going to have a distinctly calmer surface to it. Paddle out of the current to your nearest calm water, and then when you see a sandbar nearby where waves are breaking, you have your place that you can get back to shore from. You only need to just use this calm water to easily paddle towards the sandbar, where a wave can then push you right back to shore exactly where you're trying to go.